Welcome back to Velocity Lake, my dudes, and here is a little overview shot. I want you to focus on this little part of the park just here. That's going to be the focus of today's episode and the challenge that involved filling that gap in. I wanted to put a roller coaster in this part of the park, but I went through many, many, many different models and types and various different designs of lots of different types of coaster before I ultimately settled on the one I went with. And I thought, you know what? We've got so much footage and so many coasters that didn't make the cut, but ones that I was still quite proud of anyway, it would be a shame to, you know, waste that footage. So I put a tweet out saying how would people feel about seeing a kind of showcase of all the rides that didn't quite make the cut, not just for this part of the park, but for, uh, but for other parts of the park as well. And uh, people generally responded quite positively to that. So that's what we're doing in this episode as a little summary. So apologies, we don't actually do any sort of meaningful contribution to Velocity Lake and none of the actual stuff that gets left in the park permanently will be done this episode, but I thought it might be a cool thing to showcase nonetheless. Some rides that uh, didn't make the cut, and who knows? Some of them I saved the blueprint for, so they may well make a comeback at some point later on in this series. But for right now, these are unfortunately banished to the realms of history. So this is the first ride, as you can see, it is a Vekoma SLC, which is a rather controversial addition to the game. It's not a very well-loved roller coaster in the real, real world. They're quite infamous for being very, very rough rides. And what's interesting is that they pretty much all have the same layout. I don't know what this layout is called or you know, who designed it, but pretty much every single Vekoma SLC has this layout. Not this one. This layout is very similar to the very classic Vekoma SLC layout, but I wanted to put a little spin on it just to, sh just to separate this from the other Vekoma SLC to see. This Vekoma SLC was uh, designed by Lan Aerospace, so we did it properly. It's not rough, it's a really smooth ride, really fun ride. We wanted to break ground when it came to the design of Vekoma SLC. So that's kind of the uh, the muse I went with for this ride. And you know, there are Vekoma SLCs in real life, admittedly very few and far between, that are smooth rides, generally later generation ones or restored ones. But, you know, again, it's still not a very well-liked type of roller coaster. And I've been on one as well. And I didn't really have any problems with it at the time. So maybe I'm just odd. As you can see, we are now on to the second roller coaster that didn't make the cut. I'm going to show, obviously, the building of the coasters, but much, much, much faster paced than my general roller coaster building bits because it's not that important that you see the absolute ins and outs of every single part of the construction because it ain't here to stay. But you see, I'm going with a very compact a uh, single rail coaster, similar to Railblazer and Wonder Woman Golden Lasso, and of course, quite similar to the single rail coaster that was in uh, Neptune Park. Again, I didn't go with it though, and you see I didn't actually finish the layout this time, so the POV will end quite abruptly, but this is the POV of the single rail. The single rail, I've never actually been on one in real life, but I've always wanted to, because the actual off-ride footage looks insane, like the speed of these things. They just don't slow down, they are completely relentless all the way to the station at the very end. So it's one of the things I'd really, really like to go on at some point in this life or the next. But uh, as of right now, the best I've got is Planet Coaster. And of course, this isn't actually the same as the real life single rails. This is the two seat wide model, which currently doesn't exist in the real world. Although there is one being built. Maybe it's finished being built. I've been out of the loop for a while in terms of the roller coaster scene. Maybe it's been finished being built. But as of right now, the only single rails that are open to my knowledge are the ones that are one seat wide. The two seat wide ones are slightly bigger in scale. I was going for a layout. They were similar to the one seat one seat wide ones, however, um, just because I we don't have the single seat variant in this game. We've now moved on to a inverted impulse coaster. This is a layout that is from RCT2. It was one of the stock coaster layouts. I mean, there's not much you can do with a inverted impulse coasters, but it's basically rather than just the standard banana shape of the layout, we're going to do it does like a full circuit. So uh, I thought it was pretty cool. This is it here. It does a little uh, sort of notch at the top just to vary up the uh, high part of the ride and it kind of spins, spins around, it spins around, it spins around, keeps going around and around. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not the biggest fan. Hence why I didn't keep this one. I, I have nothing to really say about inverted impulse coasters. I've never seen one in real life, never been on one in real life. Quite frankly, I have no interest on going one in real life. So maybe that was part of the reason why I felt no real strong emotional attachment to this one. You may be seeing a, a theme here. Part of the reason I don't like, I haven't been liking the coasters, but they've been very, very squished in this sort of hole 
in the path. And I think I've kind of, I set myself up a bit too much of a challenge in terms of building a coaster that could fit into the confines of this path area. There's really not enough space to work with when you're building big designs. Enter the spinning coaster, uh, which is obviously a much more compact uh, roller coaster variant. I built two. And I was I was so close to going with one of these. Uh, I really, really liked the way these came out. They were based very heavily on the Spinball Wizard at Alton Towers, although I believe it's been renamed to Sonic Spinball. I don't know if the Sega sponsorship or whatever they've got going on is still in place, but it was always known as the Spinball Wizard. Everyone knows it's the Spinball Wizard, so we'll just move on. It's very, very heavily inspired by that coaster, as is the default colour scheme of the ride in the game. So that's probably, you know, the game designers are probably familiar with the ride as well. Wow, what a useless POV that was just then. Don't worry, we will show a POV. Obviously not that helpful because we're not in the inside the car itself. It, we're not inside the car itself, so you can't really get a good perspective on the spinningness of it. But I don't know, I find it quite nauseating when you're in the spinning car watching the POV. I find it far easier to uh, appreciate the layout of the coaster when we're in the nose cam like this. Obviously that corner there. Very, very common feature of these spinning coasters. The car does a full 360 usually during that big overbanked turn. So they're quite cool features of these rides. However, I don't know. I mean, it was a fair enough layout, I guess. There was just something about this layout I wasn't quite sold on. Couldn't tell you what it is. Not quite sure, but uh, we didn't end up keeping this. But I had another go. I said, you know what? I liked the idea of a spinning coaster, but maybe not quite the one we just did. So I decided to make a slightly larger layout. And I believe this one is even more reminiscent of the Alton Tower spinning coaster. So again, fairly similar height, and it starts off just like the Alton Towers one, where it goes down a little dip out of the station, then does uh, a, kind of a corner, turns back on itself, up the lift hill, and then does like little downward helix underneath the uh, lift hill, peaks up, then does like an overbank turn. So far, this is a pretty much exact replica of the Spinball Wizard. I mean, that was a pretty horrible explanation of what happens as it goes underneath the lift hill. I guess you could have just watched the footage and understood and I didn't need to elaborate but regardless we're moving on as you can see it's not quite an exact replica of the Spinball Wizard but if you're familiar with that ride you can see it is very 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 similar to the layout of the Alton Towers ride and it fits a lot nicer into the space I feel like we've made much better use of the space this time around so yeah I, I very nearly kept this one but ultimately I really liked actually how the uh sorry to just diverge again the overbanked corner is still here but it's bigger and it actually goes over the path so guests can stand underneath, wave to their loved ones, and uh, all that good stuff. But, again, didn't keep this right. And I don't think, unfortunately, I recorded a POV before I deleted it. So the best I could do is just show you this footage. Here I'm hiring a vendor. I'm not sure what I'm doing here in the footage, but in the background, <laughs> you can see the coaster running. I will zoom out. What am I doing? All right, there we go. Matt, what are you doing? Oh, hang on. Okay, I thought... Okay, hang on. Go, 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 show, show the ride past Matt, damn it. There it goes. There's, this the ride. I'm so sorry. I mean, I guess you can kind of get the gist of how it spins around by watching this real-time segment here. Probably a little bit better to appreciate it than on the ride. There it goes. So slight, dis slightly disappointing I didn't show the POV. I'm not sure why I never rode it. I was like, come on, I didn't ride it once. How did I decide I didn't like it? I guess... I guess I based a lot on it and how the actual roller coaster complemented the aesthetic of the surrounding park. Now, you come over the Grand Suspension Bridge, the first thing you see is this ride. So I wanted to look really good. And honestly, this is pretty good. I really liked that one. That was probably the best one we've done so far. However, as you can see, I have now deleted it and trying something else. So we're slowly approaching. I don't think I was just looking at the rest of the park trying to find some sort of inspiration. There goes the little blue bullet Intamin Megalite whooshing away. But if you look into the background, you can see that I've actually made things a little bit easier for myself and have opened up the path. I've got rid of the enclosed space aspect of it. So we've got a much bigger area to work with. Um, so we can build a slightly more ambitious coaster. Now, at the time of recording, Copperhead Strike was uh, hot in the news. It was a brand new Mac-launched coaster. I believe it's a Mac-launched coaster. Someone might correct me on that. So I thought, you know what? I really like that. Copperhead Strike has just been added to the game as well, like the actual coaster type. So let's build a ride that's inspired by Copperhead Strike. So as you can see, we're doing a very, very slow... Is it a JoJo roll at the beginning? A barrel roll that's very, very slow coming out of the station using the 4-meter smoothing technique. So it's buttery smooth. And then... The rest of the layout, while very similar to Copperhead Strike, is its own unique thing nonetheless, I think. Don't know. It was a while since I built this, and of course, spoiler alert once again, it's not here to stay, guys. But there is a POV for this one, luckily. Kind of a uh, an asterisk with that statement, though. There is no continuous POV. 
like because I was working on the smoothing. So I'd build a bit of the ride, watch the POV, see how smooth it was, just finish smoothing it, then move on to the next bit, do a POV there. So I've not got one continuous POV, but what, what I can do is I can stitch all of the POVs together to make a continuous one. But obviously what will be weird is that you'll be riding the ride and then it will look like the track's about to finish, then suddenly you'll turn a corner and there's now there's more track. So that's the little asterisk I've got with the uh, the POV that you're about to watch. But, you know, let me know what you think of this one. And this one, I think, is another really good one that was oh, oh so close to making the cut, but not quite there. So there are, it is obviously a bit rough around the uh, rough around the edges here and there in terms of the banking and the smoothing because of course I never got around to finishing it. So here we go. This is the launch. It's a double launch like a Copperhead Strike. I'm not sure if I actually got around to finishing or even building the second launch of the coaster, but here we go. Uh, starts much like Copperhead Strike with that big circular loop, as in a circular loop, not a teardrop shaped loop. And as we continue the layout, uh, ooh, <laughs> a seamless transition just there to another piece of that. Oh, look at that. I did get around to doing the second launch. And as you see, it launches straight to another loop. Then part of the track actually passes through that loop, which is very cool. And there's that bit there. And in fact, it goes through two loops. Look at that. Well, one, one half loop, one full loop. We then go into this sort of corkscrew that transitions smoothly into death. Because that's as far as I got with this ride, unfortunately. Once again, I was happy with how it looked, but there was just something off. I just didn't really feel feel like it fitted the aesthetic of the park. And to be honest, it's pretty good. I mean, in, in retrospect, I probably would have kept it. Now, what has just happened? We're in an old version of Neptune Park because I have this ride here. I've teased it. Well, I've not teased it, but I mentioned it in the past. This was very nearly built on the site of where we're building now, but I just didn't like it in the end. And I scrapped it, but I had loads of footage and I, I spent a good six or so hours on this ride. So I will show it anyway. This was going to go in the spot that, that we're building on currently <laughs> in this episode, although it was built much, much, a lot, a much longer time ago. I since have deleted that footage, so I haven't got the actual build process of it anymore, which is a shame. But I thought I'd showcase it nonetheless. Obviously, this ride is very heavily inspired by the Smiler at Alton Towers, but slightly, I believe it's slightly longer. I'm not sure if there's more inversions. If there are, there's not, a mu there's not much in it. Very, very Smiler inspired. So part of the design of this ride, if it were ever finished, would have incorporated lots of, uh, like a big scenery piece in the center of the layout that would have lots of close encounters with the track. And of course, by that, by by extension, the riders. There's this second launch. So rather than having a second lift hill, much like in the Smiler, there's a mid-course launch section, a bit like the a bit like Copperhead Strike to keep this thing fresh. And uh, yeah, this is the layout here. So it's a bit it's a bit too compact, a little bit too unrealistic. Not that happy with it. Hence why it never made it into the final cut of the park. I've put it in Neptune Park just because I needed a big open space. And Velocity Lake is way too there's way too much stuff in it that's not been showcased in these videos yet so I don't want to be a spoiler a spoiler boy a spoy boy so I put it in this old park that wasn't before when Neptune Park was finished just because I had this as a separate save file for some reason I thought it would break up the scenery and speaking of breaking up the scenery you may notice this area is where we have the uh, we currently now have the big RMC coaster but I've mentioned before I went through lots of different design choice uh, designs before I settled on the RMC not quite as many as the area that I'm building on for most of this episode. But nonetheless, I built lots of roller coasters, you know, before I ever settled on the RMC. I've already showcased the big aerodynamics Drakenfire inspired one. I called it Krakenfire because, you know, Kraken is a part of big part of my channel being a predominantly whiskey review channel that has KSP gameplay. Uh, but uh, I, I never showcased this one because I, I couldn't find the footage at the time. I thought I deleted it. But turns out I, I found it and I really liked this coaster, actually. It's a more traditional uh, traditional style wooden coaster. I've always had a soft spot for the uh, GCIs and stuff like that, like the old style ones where they're just all kind of rickety, bit janky, not that smooth, but still fun nonetheless. I thought it'd be kind of a nice addition. So I'm, I am still toying with toying with the idea of building a wooden coaster in this park. Uh, aside from obviously the RMC, I mean a traditional coaster like the one we're watching now. So far, I haven't uh, done that, but maybe I will before the series reaches its conclusion. But yeah, there's, no, there's really not much to say on this coaster, really. It's just a very gentle and smooth up and down, up and down, back to the station sort of ride. <laughs> Which could really describe any roller coaster now that I think about it. But there we are. I like this bit here, actually, how it wraps around that initial first corner. 
And then it just hugs the first drop. And we can really get a perspective of just how much speed we've lost throughout the ride. And there we are. Oop, a little, a little double down, which is, of course, a feature of wooden coasters generally. And then we can just do a nice, smooth helix back to the station. So again, the banking, that bit of banking would be refined a bit more if I'd had some more time to finish the coaster, if I'd, you know, ended up keeping the layout. But oh, just time warped there for no apparent reason. Uh, but of course, I didn't keep the layout and wave goodbye to the wooden coaster. Goodbye, goodbye, wooden coaster. Goodbye. I mean, I really like that coaster, but I am glad I went with the RMC that we ultimately had in the end. And uh, yeah, that was the end of the that. So now we're back to this area of the park. So this is the final coaster, you'll be pleased to hear, that didn't make the cut. And it's kind of a good way to end this episode because this is by far the most similar ride to the one we ultimately ended up going with. This was uh, this is basically a BNM Giga coaster. I believe the color scheme by default and, uh, you know, the actual basis for the ride is Col no, Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain. There's like two that are very similar. I don't know if they're both called Goliath or if one's called Colossus, but Goliath at Six Flags, Fl Six Flags Magic Mountain is definitely one of them. But either way, it's a big sit-down smooth BNM coaster, which is ultimately what ends up getting built here, which I believe we'll be doing next episode. So this is kind of the closest one we have to it. I just abandoned the idea of just building in that tiny enclosed space entirely, and we'll just be using it to accommodate only the station. I added a few loopy bits here and there to uh, finish off the ride, but uh, we don't do that in the final area, in the final coaster we build in this space. So yeah, this again, very, very nice ride. I actually based the um, layout and the color scheme of the ride on Mako at Six Flags, not Six Flags, SeaWorld Orlando. But I didn't actually record a footage, I didn't actually record a POV with the ride in this color scheme. So when we show the POV, it will suddenly revert back to having an orange color. And part of the smoothing on the bottom of one of the hills is no longer fixed. The banking is a bit off. So forgive me for that. Other than that, it's identical. So hopefully you can get the gist of it. Uh, we'll just cut. Here it is going up. So we'll just cut straight to the first drop. And off we go. So yeah, just nice, big, smooth... Uh, I really like this kind of coaster. I've been on the one at Six Flags Magic Mountain, you know, uh, Goliath. I always want to call it Colossus for some reason. Uh, Goliath at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Very, very good ride. Definitely one of my favorite ones there. And uh, yeah, I, I, I do have a hot, hot, hot spot, a soft spot. Well, by the way, this is the bit of banking that's off. There you go. I did fix that so it was flat at the bottom of that hill. But regardless, there was just something off about this ride that wasn't quite settling with me. So I got rid of it. I am a bit of a perfectionist. You may be able to tell when it comes to these rides. And I'm very, very um, picky. And I'm very fussy with my roller coaster layout. So I do go through. I do waste a lot of my life <laughs> building roller coasters that ultimately don't get finished, built in the park. But there you go. I, I, there is a, that is a showcase of some of the rides that never made the cut. Next week will be business as usual. Just building a ride that does stay in Velocity Lake. On the left-hand side are more episodes of Velocity Lake in the form of a playlist if you'd like to check those out. The right-hand side was chosen for you by YouTube's recommendation bots. Subscribe, Patreon, Twitter, Discord, all on the screen and in the description. Thank you for watching, guys. Goodbye.